And first up today, we have got Hamish, um, who will be talking all about the basic uh, kind of membership functionality within Siri CRM. So he's one of our functional consultants and our functional consultants are responsible for mapping processes and doing all sorts of configuration. And yeah, what exactly does core membership functionality look like in Civi? Hamish, I'll hand over to you. Brilliant, thanks. Um, so as a sort of overview, Civi member is one of the, so I guess the flagship modules in as part of Civi CRM. It's one of the things that, that I think the, people, the users get the most sort of benefit and uh, use from. And it's a fantastic way of helping your team sort of run all the processes involved with uh with being a sort of membership organization so everything from fees to tracking where your members are uh and it really helps as well with that that whole concept of being able to report on and engage with your membership in a much more sort of powerful automated and sort of detailed way um so for the you know, for any organization that offers membership civi member is a really really powerful tool for doing that and yeah, uh, as the tools have been built out, it really does have uh, one of the best and like sort of strongest feature sets for managing this kind of uh, this kind of data across not just sort of the open source landscape, but also uh, more generally. So specifically, in what is Civi Member, it's yeah, it's a way of connecting a membership record back to your sort of CRM data that you know C being the the customer and customer or client relationship management. And it lets you add these membership records to, to your contacts uh, that track whether they're free or paid. It lets those people you know, sign up and renew their memberships. And it can do some more complex processes like having memberships that are shared across multiple contacts, be they sort of organizations or corporate memberships. Uh, it can track whether they are rolling or fixed and adjust dates and things like that automatically. And lastly, it connects through to Civi's tooling around sort of mailing and automation there to send things like uh, reminders or welcome mails, as well as the finance tools in Civi for things like invoicing or tracking whether people are paying later for their, their memberships. So what it like the, the key part of a of Civi member is defining these membership types. So each type is the sort of template from which any one person can get their membership. And in that type, you start, you, you put in the key details that will be sort of applied to every person who is a member of that type. So things like the fees to be paid, how long your membership lasts, if there's any kind of structure around it or organization that it should belong to. And that means that the contacts can have these memberships added to them. You can have more than one for a contact and can start on sort of different dates and have those managed and sort of held in the system. The other thing that Civi lets you track about your uh, members is the status that their membership is in. So in most examples that we see, you might have something like two, two lists of people who are just your contacts and your members, and that sort of is fairly binary for sort of is a member or isn't. In Civi, there, we, there's a much broader range of statuses that you can sit in to, to, to define in a bit more detail exactly where you are in that member sort of life cycle and also trigger the different things off the back of that, be it either reminders and or mailing automations or to, to update those statuses based on things in the membership life cycle, like whether you've paid and when. So we can see here that there's a, there's a, a list of the statuses that come as a default. And that includes concepts like uh, being able to have a grace membership where you, you've passed your expiry date, but actually the system will kind of keep your membership live for a certain period so that you're not having your sort of access stripped before you've had the chance to, to pay. And this also means that you can get much more detailed reporting on how many people are in which status, seeing your brand new members versus the ones who've already been live for a while, seeing the people who are close to expiring grace or who are fully expired uh, and have been moved to the expired status. And again, Civi moves people between these statuses automatically based on a set of rules, which we can cover in the next slide. So in the settings, we might we can set up these rules to use the dates involved in an individual's membership to adjust their status 
uh, as we want. So some classic examples are the ones that I've described. New members have their status set to new, but after three months, they would move from new to being current. And then when they hit the end of their membership, they would move to grace and then eventually move on to expired. And again, these, as much as you can customize the statuses, you can customize the rules to move these around uh, as needed. So one of the standard things that comes as part of the CV member is this membership dashboard, which as a sort of from a user perspective, is just a really nice way to get an overview of how many mem how many members you have in what type. And so start to use this as the place that you can uh, track not just of where all your members are, but who's joining, who's renewing and to drill in from there and see the, the members who are in each type. So I'll run through really quickly what it's like to, to go through and create a member in Civi. So you start with a contact record and you're adding your membership record to that contact. You can choose our membership type because we've set those up in the system already. And when we choose that type, it will start to pull through information about things like how long the membership should be and what price it might have or other details like that. We can also set the dates and so you know if the if the member has been if you're importing from a previous place then you can really make that uh, you can count that information as well as when this current membership period starts and lastly we can add things like a an associated contribution and I'll, I'll give a little bit more detail in a second but being able to also as part of creating that membership record if there's a payment associated and where that payment is is it complete or is it outstanding and therefore the membership itself will reflect that being either pending or or live, depending on where that person is in the in the payment process. So, what does it look like? Uh, this is a, a sort of overview, and we're using this sort of Shoreditch theme here for our example. But you can see how memberships, like sort of any other kind of record in Civi, are one of the really key sort of. Uh, tabs that you see on a contact record, and so when you look at a contact under that membership tab your tab, you can see what memberships they have, the key information on them, like the dates and the status, and even from here, add a new membership if you want to add to do that. So I, I talked briefly about the idea of paying for a membership, and that means touching on the sort of the other area of Civi's uh, power functionality, which is the finance functions. And that means that we have a contribution record and contributions for those who might not have uh, seen Civi in quite as much detail are Civi's term for any kind of payment coming in, be it a payment that's already been made or a payment that's sort of owed or promised in some way. And so when we create uh, our, our membership, we can also create a, a linked contribution that will reflect that. But we also use contributions for other things like donations, event fees, or any other sort of process that you, you have that would involve finance and Civi. So the, the, the key functionality that joins the two is this idea that the contributions are linked to memberships. So if we have a paid membership, we create our membership record and Civi automatically creates a contribution that's connected to it. And these are linked in that if the payment is outstanding, the membership won't read as fully live, it will show as pending. And similarly, when we record the payment and date that contribution to be sort of fully paid, Civi will automatically push, push that through to the membership and update the membership to now be current and live and correct. So this is a great way of uh, simplifying the tracking around the payments process for your memberships, because it means that if someone hasn't paid or hasn't been marked that as paid in Civi, you can tell straight away from their membership and that will give them even more of an incentive to actually sort of pay for their membership or renew. And it's from this process as well, from our contribution records that we can do things like create and issue invoices and make that process easier for, the, for your members to actually complete their payments. So a quick note on invoices, Civi has a great sort of set of tools around generating and sending invoices. So we can see in the, on the left hand side here that looking at an individual sort of contribution, which has got some details on the payment amount, we can, there are buttons to either email an invoice directly to them or download a PDF. And when we do download that PDF invoice, you can see that it will generate an invoice based on a template with a lot of the key details for that payment, showing things like the different line items, tax, 
what amount is outstanding and what's been paid already. And if needed be things like details on how to pay as well. So these can be really great for issuing that to your members and getting them to pay. So one really useful concept is the idea that you can link memberships between organizations and people. So I know we lots of clients we come across have memberships where the organization is a member and it's then that the people who work for that organization want to sort of inherit that membership. And Civi lets us do that using the relationships uh, in Civi. So we can set it so that the individual contacts can inherit that membership if they have the right kind of relationship. So it's going to be a really nice way to keep your member organization and then anyone who's connected to it automatically inherits that, mem that membership. And so on the next side, we can see what that looks like, where our test design company is a current member and then our uh, individual at the bottom there has inherited that corporate relationship by corporate membership by relationship. So for renewals, this depends on uh, on how you've set up your memberships and the processes you want to take. And there are lots of different ways that different organizations go about this. But broadly speaking, there's two key ways either to have the renewals handled internally by the organization where you might be talking directly to that member or working with them in some way and then going into Civi to, to, uh, to mark that they've been renewed. Or you might have some kind of process where you would be publishing a form or using a portal and letting members come in and renew their own relationships and uh, renew their own memberships and then potentially even paying for the, another year's worth of membership in the process. So here looking at the the, the manual side, we can see that there's a, a renew button uh, that triggers a, you know, adding an extra year. Or similarly, we have some examples here of how a like a form, like, you know, we use Drupal web forms a lot, but there's a lot of different ways of doing this, can be used to let someone fill their details, add payment information, and pay and trigger a, you know, a year's worth of renewal for their membership. Lastly, I will cover some of the sort of search and reporting tools that uh, that come with Civi. So Civi has a huge range and sort of variety of search tools that let you get hold of the records you have in a, a number of different ways. So the, the first and foremost is this find memberships option, which is one of the first things you'll see in the memberships menu. And it's a great way of getting hold of members, uh, of the data in your members at a glance, because you can, with, with a couple of options, like selecting only current members or selecting members of a certain type, get a search view of every, you know, everyone in your system who has the right kind of membership. But it's worth noting that you can also do it, go, uh, work in a bit more a detailed way and use tools like advanced search or search kit to get some uh, even more complex queries going to pull that membership data as it's connected to your contact data. So here we can see the memberships area in the advanced search screen. And so you can see that essentially alongside all of the other fields in Civi that we can use as search criteria, like the person's contact details, the contents of custom fields, activities, relationships, we can also include membership details in that search. So you can start to really cross-reference different kinds of records and build queries that would let you say things like, show me all my contacts who live in a certain region, who've attended this meeting and who also have a gold membership and, and cross-reference all of those different sort of record types in Civi in a single search, which can be really powerful and uh, gives you a lot of depth in, in that, that functionality. Lastly, Civi has its own porting suite built in. And as, as any sort of core part of the system, membership has its own set of membership reports. So the other area that you'll see either from the membership sort of menu in Civi or from the reports area is this sort of reports area. So every, any Civi instance out of the box will have a set of pre-made reports that are designed to show you specific and sort of useful views for the majority of the membership or like users, either showing you your list of members, potential prospects, the amount of revenue coming from your memberships by different types. So there's a whole suite of preset reports that can really help you get that reporting process off the ground and make life a little bit easier. Obviously, the other, the other area is that once you've got these membership reports, you can customize them, add details, and really build up your own set that should tailor-made to your, uh, 
your own sort of needs and processes. So that's me for the memberships area. I think I'm a minute early. So in fact, yeah. uh, if, if, we, if, we, if we've got 60 seconds to spare, there's, I can see there's a hand up from Norm. So we could, I can try and take a question if we can. Yeah, in. although, OK, one question. But yeah, every other question we'll put at the end just because we've got a rather tight schedule. Hi, um, I have an organization that has hierarchy of regions, clubs and members that are individuals. We're using membership module for individual members that are not part of clubs. But it's interesting that you could show that there's organizational membership. So we're thinking about migrating our clubs to become members and using the member module for the clubs where the dues are based on the number of members, uh, individuals within the club. Have you worked with companies that do something similar? Yes, actually, so we've we've had a few clients who have similar structures where they'll they'll have yeah organizations and then either individuals or even subgroups of that and with varying fees. It takes a bit of a cust uh, each setup we've done has been different for the client needs. So there's no one recipe, but it, I can definitely say that building that kind of setup is possible.